Am I live? Is this real? Is Facebook really actually making this live? We will find out because I was supposed to do this yesterday and because of whatever happened with Facebook that it didn't work out. So now here I am live. So hopefully this is working. Hopefully you can get on live. So I have a really, really important question to ask you today. And the question is, are you being a prostitute in your life? Now, I'm not exactly meaning what you think I'm meaning. I'm probably sure you're like, what the hell, Amy? What are you talking about? So I, I mean, I guess I am. I am kind of talking about that, but I'm talking about it more as a role, as an archetype that Caroline Mace just really just completely amplified these four different survival archetypes that we all have. And I'm here today to teach you about them and see how you are letting these four, four archetypes run your life. So, hi, Leslie, good to see you. Nope, not anymore. Yes, good, good. I'll be honest, I still I still do it here and there, and I'll share with you when I get to the prostitute archetype how how I'm um how I was just recently called out for being a prostitute in my business. So it still shows up. I mean, these are four archetypes that just absolutely show up with every single single human being. So yes, prostitute has that like connotation to it, but I'll get, I'll get deeper into it. So kind of like archetypes, if you, if you don't understand what an archetype is, it's just kind of like a role. So it's like, everyone knows what a jock, what the jock is or who the jock is or what the jock looks like, right? Or the cheerleader or the princess, or if you want to think about like the wise sage, um, the warrior, or nowadays the computer geek or the yogi. I mean, we all kind of know what that person shows up looking like and representing. And that's what I'm talking about as I'm talking about the archetypes. Now, again, the archetypes come from like way back in psychology days, probably earlier than Jung, um, Jungian psychology. He, he was the one that first talked about archetypes and dreams and symbols. And then Caroline Mace, who is freaking amazing and inspires me every day I listen to her. She's the one that goes deep into these four survival archetypes, which I'm going to share with you, which one of them is the prostitute. And there's also the child. So we all have the archetype of the child. We all have the archetype of the victim. And if you saw my live, um, I don't know, earlier or my podcast where I'm talking about drama, drama, drama. It's the drama triangle. So I talk all about the victim on that. So we all have a victim. We all have a prostitute and we all have a saboteur. And I know every single one of you can understand that you all have a saboteur because we all sabotage and I hear it every single day and see it. So let me see what you guys are saying. Hi, Joyce. Good to see you. Leslie, love her work. I know. Caroline Mace is just like, she's, she's, I, I love her. I love her so much. Love your necklace. Thank you. I got this in, um, where did I get this? Barcelona. So I wanted to, it, it uh, matched my shirt. So I was like, oh, this would be pretty to wear today. T, you made it. Oh my gosh, I'm so impressed. T, T likes to say that she isn't very good with technology. So you made it, T. You're here live. Congratulations. <laughs> Leslie, I was the victim big time until age 46. Good. You know what? I love that you're actually sharing that because that's how we get better. That's how what we can't change anything until we understand it. And that's why I'm here today to teach you guys all about the four different survival archetypes. So same with me, Leslie, like I still play victim. I still play all of these roles. That's just, that's just how it is. It's just the more aware of it that I am, the more I can like catch it very quickly and like, oh gosh, I'm playing I'm in the prostitute. Oh, I'm in the victim. Oh, I'm playing a child right now. Oh, I'm in the, I'm sabotaging. So yeah, good for you for outing yourself and saying like, yep, I've been doing it. And I stopped at 46, like way, way, what am I trying to say? I try to say well done and way to go at the same time. So way done. Um, <laughs> but yeah, well done. Um, Leslie, always working through Saboteur. Hi, Marcy. So good to see you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to get 
a lot from this. So now that I know that Facebook is working again, that you guys can see me live, that I can see you, I'm going to jump in. Leslie, what tech are you using? Your live looks upscale. It's so upscale. Um, I'm using, it's called Ecamm. So if you have a Mac, then you can sign up for Ecamm. And I think I have like a, uh, what's it called? Like referral or something like a discount or something. So if you have a Mac, let me know and I can send you my referral code afterwards. If you want to check it out, it's pretty, pretty awesome. I like Ecamm a lot. I mean, it's cool. Cause I get to, I get to do this and look all sophisticated and have my little, my brand on the <laughs> page. So yeah. Okay. So let's jump in. So these archetypes show up big time. So the archetypes of the child, the victim, the prostitute, and the saboteur, and they show up big time when we are having major life challenges. That's when they're just like, here we are we're right here. We're going to interrupt and erupt your life right now. So all these archetypes influence how we relate with power, with fame, with money, how we respond to authority, and why we make the choices that we do. So here's the other piece with it too, is I'm sure you guys have all heard of everyone has kind of that shadow and that light side to them. So shadow meaning parts of us that we've repressed, parts of us that we don't really like. And I'll give you a little hint. If there's something you don't like in someone else and you feel very strongly about not liking a certain trait in someone else, it means that's part of your shadow. So just own it and say, oh, if I don't like that in someone, that means it's my shadow. And that that's how you, that's how you're aware of it. And that's how you change your life for the better is once you can own it, and say, oh, okay, I get it. That's part of my shadow. Like shadow work is huge. So we all have that shadow. We all have that light side, the light side of us that is joyful, that is happy, that is powerful, that is being our the best self that we can possibly be. And so, and then each of these roles have its own shadow and its own light side. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So is um, to teach you, so, so basically these archetypes, they teach you how to own your power when life gets difficult. So you can either choose to have life go very, like not very, okay, let's be honest. You can either choose to have life go more smoothly than possible with the path of least resistance, or you have these archetypes give you a huge wake up call. So it's up to you once you're aware of them, which you can't say you're not aware of them after you watch this whole entire live or listen to this whole entire audio. So once you're aware of them, that's when you get to choose. Do I want the path of least resistance or do I want to be knocked over the side of the head with these archetypes showing me things need to change in my life? So if you are ready, if you're ready to step up and choose how you want to show up in your life, and you're ready to look at the situations and the benefits of all of these different archetypes. And if you're ready to own your power and choosing to be conscious of these archetypes, then continue listening. So let me see what you guys are saying. Um, Leslie, Mac soon, but not at the moment. It died. Oh no. Okay. All right. Um, Akshaya. Yes. Hi. I hope I said your name right. I that's one thing about me, you guys. I'm such a butcher of names. So just like laugh and please just know <laughs> I just suck at uh, pronouncing things sometimes. So that's just me and I just have to own it. Uh, Leslie, I love shadow work. Yeah, I I love, I have a love and a hate for shadow work, right? And I'm sure you do too. Because shadow work is like, oh, that, that's when we come up the strongest and that's when we really, really own our power. But during it, that's the hardest part. And Leslie, you and I work very similar with similar clients. And I know for me, and I'm sure for you with your clients, that's the hardest part for them. That's when they want to run away. That's when the sabotage comes out. That's when all these different archetypes come out because it's not, shadow work is not easy, but oh my gosh, is it worth it? Absolutely. Akshaya, how can, let me see what you said. How can one relate with their shadow projections and others better instead of hating them? That's a great question because if 
it's like if you hate them, then you hate a part of you. And so it's just understanding, uh, okay, this is a part of me for a reason. It's, it's to get into acceptance of it, like accept it. Like, here's the thing. We all have a lot of the same similar qualities, whether we like them or not. And if you see them in other people and you don't like it, it belongs inside of you. And the best way to do it is just to accept it. Like, it doesn't mean it's anything good or bad. It just, it is what it is. We all have it. And the more we push it away and the more we don't want to look at it and the more we make it wrong in other people, the more it's going to keep showing up as a pattern in our life and we're not going to be happy. So I would say the best way to not hate it is to not hate it. It's just like, this is just a part of me. This is just, this is just a human condition. This is just what happens. Everyone has it. I'm not special and it's, it's going to be okay. So the more that you can just embrace it and here's, Here's the cool thing is I'm going to get deeper into how shadow, like a lot of times, and maybe I did this earlier, so I'll like make up for it, but shadow gets a bad rep. But here's the thing is like, there's good to the shadow. The shadow is waking you up. The shadow is showing you what is in your life that you don't like. And it's showing you to change. It's not keeping you in that like stagnant place. It's like, Hey, you don't like this part of you. Let's go there. Let's go through it. So you can begin to love it and accept it and change it. You actually can change the way you look at those shadow parts of you. And we're going to talk about that deeper. So that's a great question. Akshaya. Um, yes. Deep diving. Leslie says, okay, perfect. So the first one is the child. Let me do my cool little tech thing. Boom. The child. So, this is an archetype that everyone really, really resonates with. I mean, we all were children once. A lot of us have children. So we really, really resonate with it. And we, and we love that childhood part of us. We love that, that lighthearted, that innocent, that curious, that adventure, that playful, playful part of us. And so, and when you are in this personality and like the, in the light side of the shadow, it brings out the best in you and it brings out the best in others. And that's when we feel like so much joy and love and happiness and curiosity and not like blaming ourselves. It's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm sure all of you who are parents, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And for those of you who aren't like me, not yet, is you can remember back to your childhood when curiosity was a really really amazing thing and just when you embody that curious attitude and you embody that adventurous time and that joyful time it's such an amazing thing and so when it comes to the child the view of life for the child is the question of should I be in fear or not is whatever is occurring in my life is this something I need to be fearful of or not and here's a big one with the child too, is do I deserve it or not? So anytime you're asking yourself that question, whether it's deserve this relationship, deserve to treat yourself well, deserve a massage, deserve to charge what you're worth, deserve any of that, you're usually in your child if you're asking that question. And so the core issues in childhood, in, in this child archetype, is has to do all about taking responsibility and being like dependency. So are you being dependent? Are you interdependent? Are you independent? All three of these types of dependency work out different times in your life and are, are important in different times of your life. But sometimes when you're supposed to be interdependent, you're being dependent, which can make you codependent. And sometimes when you're supposed to be dependent, you're being independent and you're pushing people away. So that's just something to, to think about. So the biggest fear for the child is they fear abandonment. So if you're ever feeling, if you ever have that feel, that feeling come up of feeling that abandonment, like someone's going to leave you, you're going to be alone, then most likely this is your child archetype that is showing up. And so the question to, to really embody this childhood archetype is you have to ask yourself, can I take the wisdom from these early years, these early childhood years and use them towards my powerful adult? 
that's how you can integrate kind of that like light and shadow side and take what you've learned and integrate it into, okay, how can I take this and use it to be a powerful adult? Okay, so let me see. I know you guys are posting lots of things. So let me see what you posted. Leslie. Oh my gosh, when I realized I had narcissistic beliefs in my shadows and unconscious after a lifetime attached to several and married to a narcissist, oh my gosh, I had a huge, I had such a huge denial, even when I believed myself to be really conscious. Yeah, that's not easy at all, especially because, and I don't know, Leslie, you can tell me, but I would imagine is the denial is shame and you don't want to feel the shame of what you've attracted into your life and taking that responsibility. And so denial is a lot of times what can cover up shame. So you'll have to let me know if that's, if that was going on, but yeah, it's like, and that's the thing you, you, I think you said you, yeah, you married a narcissist. So here's the thing that you attracted that into your life. So you had like, there's some shadow of narcissism. We all have the shadow of narcissism. So that's huge, 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 Leslie. I, I love you. You're so vulnerable and open and thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So yeah, let me know if, if, if it was the, the denial was, was overriding, trying to override the shame. Um, Akshaya, is it the inner child? Yeah, 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 it is inner child. Yes, Leslie says, imagination and creativity. Yes, exactly. Um, Akshaya, I always, I think I always question if it's scary or not. Yeah, yeah. So that means in that moment when you're asking, is this scary or not? Is this something I should fear or not? That would mean that you are in your child. And I'm not talking about some real fear of someone's chasing after you or, or something re like a real fear. It's like we have so many fears in our head that aren't even happening. So if it's one of those and you're questioning if you need to be scared or in fear, then yeah, you're absolutely in 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 your child. And I would say probably in that wounded child. And I'll go deeper into that. Let me just catch up with your comments, Leslie. I still struggle with wanting to only be, wait, I can't read. I still struggle with wanting to be only, oh, I can read. Okay, one more time, because I, crazy. I still struggle with wanting to be only independent. Yeah. And I bet you probably because, I mean, I don't know what happened in your marriage or what happened in your past, but if you only want to be independent, then there's a fear that someone's going to take away your independence. And so it's, it's that like, I can only be independent. I'm not going to be code of, like codependent isn't a good example, but interdependent. Interdependent is where we really, really want to be. So that's something if whatever happened in your past, that could be why you have this strong feeling of wanting to be independent is because of it's kind of we go to the extreme we have one extreme and we don't like it so we go to that next extreme and so what we have to learn is well how do i come into the middle instead of going to these two different extremes which aren't serving us how do i how do i come into the middle and that's interdependent um leslie says shame yes seeing only my good yeah yeah, and exactly. And at 46, you're like, nope, done, going into shadow, not owning this anymore. Good for you. Um, Akshaya, how to integrate these fears of abandonment in and alchemize, and alchemize it to power. Let me make sure I can read this right. How to integrate these fears of ab abandonment into power. Okay. How do you integrate these fears of abandonment into power? So, well, you, you own it. You own that I'm feeling, I'm feeling abandoned. What's, what's really going on? You take responsibility. That's what I said is that child core issue is it's all about responsibility and dependability. So if you're feeling abandoned in that moment, what like you're not taking responsibility for what's ever going you're giving that person too much power that person or thing that's abandoning you it has all of your power so for you to get your power back you have to like you have to take responsibility and see why am i giving this person or this thing my power leslie yep total manifester mm -hmm. 
Let's see. Ancestral trust issues and still happening in this lifetime. I feel a ton of this. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a huge thing is like lifetimes and lifetimes of lifetimes of trust issues. And, and that, that stuff is like so far out of my realm. I don't know if you, how much you work on past life. I don't really work on that too much, but I'm very interested in it. And it's just like, Sometimes we can, we get to heal it. And sometimes we have to keep incarnating to heal it. So I don't, yeah. And that's the thing is you're still healing it. So at least you're seeing it and you're at least attracting, like you're, you're beginning to trust more, but it might just keep showing up as your pattern. Okay, cool. I think I'm all caught up. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being being here. Yeah, Leslie, I do a lot of ancestral lineage healing. That's really cool. That's really cool. So I'll have to send clients to you when they want that. I'm like, okay, go to Leslie. <laughs> I, I like to deal with what's happening now, like presently. If, if past life show up, of course, I'll like go into it. But that's, that's my gift. So your gift, Leslie, is that ancestral and lineage healing. Okay, so Here's, here's the part, and I'm not going to go deep into this because it's already like, it's a lot of stuff, but there's different types of child archetypes. So you guys can, there's so many things written about these. So I'm just going to go through them very quickly. Um, there's the wounded child. So the wounded child is someone who you've had abuse, you've had trauma, you've had neglect. And so when, when you're in your child, you're either in that light, happy, adventurous, joyful, curious place, or you can be in this abuse, like feeling abused, feeling traumatic, feeling neglectful. That's a lot of, um, a lot of healers, me included. A lot of us are called wounded healers because we were wounded and that's why we're healers because we've gone through our own will, wills. We've gone through our own healing to be able to help other people with what they're going through. Next one is the orphan child. So this is the child that just never feels like they belong. Then there's the magical innocent child. And this part, this I would say is more of that, that's, well, actually all, all of these have a shadow and light. I'm not going to go into it because it's just way too deep, but all of these have a shadow and light. So the magical innocent child sees the beauty in everything and embodies courage and wisdom. Then there's a nature child and this is a child that is bonded with nature and animals. Then there's, oh gosh, here we go. My like white girl's going to come out because I don't speak Spanish very well. But Puella is the female version. And then pu Puer, Puer, I think, is the male version. So it's in, it's in Espanol. So it means eternal child. So this is someone, when you're in this archetype, you always are young in your mind, your body, and your spirit. Then there's the dependent child, and this is the child when you're really feeling needy uh, and you don't feel like you're good enough. That's when you're in the dependent child. And then there's the divine child, which it, I think it's very similar to the magical and innocent child, but from what Carolyn May says is it's, it's still that innocence and that purity, but the difference is, is there's like a redemptive piece to it. And so let me get caught up with your... I'd love that. Thank you. Yeah, Leslie. Um, Akshaya, where can I read about this info on archetypes? So Caroline Mace is amazing. I will, um, as soon as I'm done with this live, I'll put in the comments the audio that I love to listen to. I mean, all of her books are amazing, but the audio that it just really, really goes deeper into this more than I can do in one hour with you guys. Um, I'll put that in the comments as soon as it's done. Okay, so I want to, with each of these archetypes, I want to give you my story and I want to give you a client story so so you can kind of like see perspective. And then of course, share your story like you've already been doing, Leslie. So if you're watching, you can share your story too and then I can highlight it and we can talk about that. And you can always ask questions as well, just like you're doing Akshaya, so it's perfect. So I don't even know what my story is about the inner child because I've been working with my therapist who's a shaman for what, like nine years now. And we've moved into where we're doing more like meditation. But of course I go in there and I tell her what's going on with me. And then she'll like point out, Amy, you're in your victim or Amy, you're in your child. And so it's like 
this is something that's constantly, I mean, all four of these archetypes are constantly going to be in our life. And so, um, so when I'm, when I show up with her or when I'm in my adult and I don't want to be an adult and I don't want to take responsibility, that's when it shows up. Like <laughs> right now I'm condoing, you know, like Marie Kondo, she's like so big right now and everyone's decluttering and, um, or I guess it's tidying up. She doesn't like the word decluttering. So it's tidying up. So I've been really trying to tidy up and oh my gosh, this has brought out my child so badly where I'm just like wanting to throw a tantrum and starting and not wanting to finish it and like not wanting to take responsibility for all of the crap that I have that I have to go through. And so I'm constantly confronted with my child every single time I'm, I'm supposed to be condoing. So that's just an example right now of what's going on. And, and, um, let me see what client story I mean, so many clients are in there in their child as well. Um, oh, I, so, okay. So the, so the main child thing is scared of abandonment. So any, any, anyone who's like scared to speak their truth and share their feelings. So I've had plenty of clients where they're scared to share how they truly feel in their relationship with their partner. And because they're worried if they actually share their true feelings, their authenticity, what's going on with them, that their partner's going to leave them. And I've had to work with many, many women, men too, but mostly men, uh, women on this issue of, of showing them that, hey, actually, if your partner's a really good person, they're going to really respect you, that you, you are standing up for what you believe in. You are speaking your truth. And it's not easy to do. I mean, my therapist had to work with me for years to get me to speak my truth and ask for what I want. So I think that's why I'm so good at doing it now because my therapist worked with me on um, years and still in my relationship. It's not exactly easy to bring up the things that bring me shame that I have to share with him how I feel and ask for what I want. But the fact that I do it, it makes things so much easier than just like pushing it down and repressing it. So that's how I know when I'm in my child and that's how I see it in, in my clients as well. Um, Leslie, me today. Okay. The condoing. Yeah. It's like, Oh, this little girl in me is like, I just want to watch TV and eat junk food. and I don't want to condo. <laughs> um, Akshaya, I do much act up from my child in relationships. Yeah. Yeah, so there's that fear of abandonment most likely showing up if you're noticing that, that you are acting in your child in relationships. Uh, Leslie, overwhelmed and tired, and I feel like that child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I know you do a ton of work on this, so it's just like, it's just like talking, this sounds so woo-woo, but it's like talking to your inner child and it's okay. Like everything's going to be okay. I know you're overwhelmed. I know you're tired. This is, and I'm like counseling myself at the same time, by the way. I know you don't want a condo. I know this doesn't feel good, but this is what we're going to do. And, and actually, you know, what my therapist taught me is it's like your inner child doesn't have to do this. You step up as the adult and you say, you got to go play. Inner Amy, little Amy, go outside, go play. Go play with all the beautiful butterflies outside right now. Go, go play, go watch TV, do what you want. I'm the adult, I'm gonna step up and I'm gonna do it. So that's what I've worked with my therapist with for years on. <laughs> it's still so hard. So the question to ask yourself to know if you're, if you're in this child is where are you not taking responsibility in your life? Because where you are not taking responsibility in your life usually means that you are in your child. And if you want to change and be more of an adult and own your power, then you have to take responsibility. Just like I have to take responsibility of condoing my house and not letting my little child throw a tantrum and, and win and get the power. Leslie, yes, I'm going through a huge up-leveling in my biz and moving into high-ticket coaching. Yay, I'm so happy for you. And it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. And that's that's a good thing because we're going to get into saboteur and that's going to be perfect for what we're talking about. So um, I don't yeah, I don't know. If remind me or um, but yeah, you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about with that, like that huge up level. And there comes that saboteur. So we'll get into that. OK, 
So that's the child. If you have any questions about the child, put them in the chat. I'm going to move on to the victim. And I'm, and when I'm done, then I'll look back at the chat. So chat away. Okay. So the victim. So I did a huge Facebook live on this. This is the podcast of mine. This is, this has been the most listened to podcast that I've done where it's the drama triangle. And I talk about how we play the roles of the victim the rescuer and the persecutor. So I go really deep into the victim. If you want to know more about the victim, I'll share a little bit here. And so when you are in that victim archetype is you're looking for someone to rescue you and you're avoiding standing up for yourself. And so when you're in the victim archetype, the biggest fear is change, is change in life and aloneness. And you, you want to stay in that victim. You want someone else to, to fix you, to complete you, to rescue you. You're, you're not very good at standing up for yourself. And so this is like just completely fear change and fear being alone. And uh, so the core issue with the victim. Oh, I didn't, I didn't change my cool thing. There we go. We're on victim now. So the core issue with victim is giving up your power to avoid taking responsibility. So it's very similar to child because child is about responsibility and dependency. And so the core issue with victim is avoiding taking responsibility. So it's very, very like fine tuned. And so a lot of times when someone, you can very easily see when someone is in victim is when you're giving that, you don't have to be giving them advice. You're just encouraging them or giving them some ideas. And so you're saying, oh, well, why don't you try this? And they say, yeah, but I can't do that because of this. Okay, well, why don't you do that? Yeah, but I can't do that because da, 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 da. And so it's the yeah, buts. So if, if you're ever around someone and you're, you're trying to uplift them, you're trying to help them in whatever way you can, and they want to stay stuck and they're finding every excuse that they can, they're in their victim. And when you do that, I do that too. I do the yeah, buts. And so when I'm in my victim, I'm noticing like, oh, okay, I'm doing all the yeah, buts. Like I'm, I'm wanting to stay stuck. Okay. That means I'm not wanting to stand up for myself. And, or that means that I'm wanting someone to rescue me. So when you are in victim, the victim is control in control of your life. You're not you, you are not in control anymore of your life. Your victim is running you. So they, they like to say is like life happens to you. So you have no control. Life just happens to you. You know, you wake up and you stub your toe and you, your boss yells at you, you know, they have those scenarios, but it's like, you're not in control. Life is happening to you. And you poor me, poor me is that victim. And so the shadow part of this victim is like I said, poor me, the self-pity, feeling completely powerless, feeling like you have no power at all and someone needs to rescue you or someone needs to, to make it your fault, feeling, feeling like it's your fault. And this is really like if you are not, if you're in your victim, you're, you don't have any self-esteem. You don't have any self-esteem because you've completely given away your power. So here, there, there is a light side to this. And that's what I want you to understand is shadow doesn't necessarily shadow is just an awareness when you're in your shadow of these these archetypes it's just an awareness of it's like oh i'm playing victim right now i'm in my victim right now what's going on like i need to look at this so the light side and there is a light side you would think like oh gosh when someone's playing victim how how is there a light side to this well there is so exactly what i said it alerts you that you are being either victimized or you are doing the victimizing. So, or, or you're do, like you're being victimized or not victimizing, sorry. Let me try that again. It alerts you that you are being victimized or you are looking for someone to rescue you. That's what it's alerting you about. You're not owning your power at all. You're looking for someone to rescue you or someone's victimizing you. So the light side of that is when you see that, and you take responsibility and you get your power back, then you're victorious. And you can't allow this fear to control you anymore. And you're challenging those fears. And you say, like, I will not allow you to control me. 
and you begin to make choices that empower you so you can get your power back. So let me check your, uh, Akshaya says, taking responsibility of how I feel is hard for me. Not sure if it's the victim or the child. Yeah, it could be both because they both have to do with responsibility. Um, take responsibility of how I feel, how you feel. It, yeah, I need more. I need more context of that because how you feel, are you feeling like someone's taking advantage of you? Are you feeling like you can't stand up for yourself? Or are you feeling that you're like, um, like you're feeling abandoned or you're having all of these fears. So the more detailed you can get, the more you can see which one you're in. Leslie, yes, for me. Yeah. So all about integrity, Leslie says. Absolutely. Yes. Integrity is huge. It's walk your talk, right? And it's, it's not easy to do. And, you know, I've worked with so many clients where their parents were hypocritical. They told them, do, what is that whole, like, do as I say, not as I do? Well, that's so backwards when you're parenting someone because you're telling your kids, hey, I can do this, but you can't do this. And yeah, I don't know where I got on that tangent, but that happens so many times. And that's, that's not an integrity. Like, why is it okay for you to do it and they can't do it? And what, why are you superior and why are they inferior? So yeah, again, total tangent. Um, so here's a client story. So I had a client who she, she was blaming her husband for everything. So she, she could eat, like she could go to her once. Well, actually it took her, took her a while to actually get to what she truly wanted. And so I, I would ask her, well, what do you want? And then it's like, eh, you know, but I finally got her to it. And then the yeah, buts came as soon as she got in touch with what she wanted, then it was like, yeah, but my husband's not going to do this. Yeah. But my husband, you know, I really want to go on this trip, but my husband does this and my husband doesn't have any fun. And then he blames me. And, and so it was just like, she had no control over her life. And all she did was blame her husband. And I kept showing her that. And I kept showing her the way, right? I was like, look, there's so many other options out there. And I was encouraging her to do this and this and this and take responsibility. And it was so hard for her. And we didn't really work together that long. I wanted her to continue working with me and she just decided not to because, you know, I mean, that, that's just how things go. She, her victim was strong and it's scary. It's scary. Like, like we talked about early, Leslie, it's scary to get into that shadow stuff. It's scary to have to take responsibility. It's so much easier to blame or be in denial and not change. But if she continued working with me, she I think she could have a really, really good life and actually do what she wants. And I mean, she said blatantly, I want to, I want a divorce, but he doesn't want one and I feel bad for him. So there's the people pleasing part too. And that just, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Like, why are you going to give up your happiness for this person who doesn't make you happy? And then you're just going to blame him. So that that's like victim energy completely. And, and a lot of times when people are stuck in victim, it's really hard to get them into that victorious place. Victims are, and I'm, uh, trust me, I've been a victim so many, many times. My, my therapist, God bless her because I've not been an easy client. And she's told me that from the beginning. That's probably why I'm so good at what I do is because I was such a hard nut to crack for her. And so I've like learned so much with working with her. So, um, so yeah, that was my client. And then I just told you, I've just been a, a victim my whole life. And, um, I, a good good story of mine is back when I was dating and it was just like, Oh my gosh, the everything's happening to me. Like why am I attracting all of these asshole guys and why are they hurting me? And why don't they love me? And why don't they care about me? And it was just straight giving my power to these guys and thinking I didn't, I didn't know who I was. And I was thinking, Oh, well, if I'm with this person, then I'll be okay. Then I'll be happy. I'll be happy when, right. I'll be happy when I'm in a relationship. So thank God I never found a relationship and I had to go through my shadow because now I have an amazing relationship. And that's because I owned my power and I showed up as this respectful woman. And that's what Jeremy said is he just loved how authentic and, and respect, 
like respecting I was of myself and I had to go through that but I was in victim so much and I'm blaming all of these guys blaming the dating side blaming everything the yeah buts were huge and and yeah I obviously don't do that anymore because I'm in a relationship but that's when I found my relationship is when I own my power and I was like look here it is and I he, he still laughs to this day because he's like Amy you told me some like crazy red flags about you from the minute we met and I was like well you still wanted to date me <laughs> and it, but it wasn't it, it and I think what it was is because I told him my red flags but I did it in a very like look this is these are my issues this is what I'm working through take it or leave it I think because I was single for eight years and online dating for so long that I'm like I'm just gonna throw it all out there because I'm not gonna waste my time anymore so that's one of one of my stories of playing victim so the questions to ask yourself is do you blame others for your life experiences then you're in your victim and do you feel powerless more than powerful you're in your victim okay let me let me um get to your comments Exia says with how I feel in relationships, I just want to blame and attack, especially related to the victim triangle. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to blame and attack, then the blame is the victim. The attack is the persecutor from the victim triangle, which I talked about in an earlier podcast episode. So yeah, that that's being in victim. That's not owning your power. That's exactly all of these archetypes are about not owning our power. Leslie, my parents and my ex. Okay. So you're saying that they are, they're victims. I think that's what you're saying is your parents and, and your ex were victims. So, oh, here we go. So many tried to help me. Countless therapists. I had to do it myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, like Leslie, you and I do very similar work and we guide people we guide people, but it's, you have to do the work. The client has to do the work We're we can't take all of the credit. And that's one thing that's really hard to do too, in a healing place is it's like, you can't take the credit for their successes and you can't take the credit for their failures. So yeah, it's, it's they, and we have to do our own work and thank God we find mentors and people that are going to guide us through them. Akshaya, I'm so stuck in my victim, especially around my parents. Good, good. That's very, very, very good awareness. So now you can change it because you see it that you do it with your parents. How can, hi Robert, good to see you. How can one shift into feeling victorious? Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Stop giving your power away. As soon as you stop giving your power away, you own it, you take responsibility for whatever's happening in that situation, and you own your power, that's when you're victorious. Make it sound a lot easier than it is, but that, that's how you do it. You notice what's happening, you're aware of the roles you're playing, you're answering these questions that I'm giving to you, you're paying attention to it, you're taking responsibility, and you're owning your power. Robert, I haven't been present in like forever and I pop in and there is a live stream. This is the most excellent indeed. Oh, Robert, so good to see you. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while either. Um, oh God, online dating was a true source of frustration for me. Yeah, me too. Although I will say I did meet my boyfriend on Tinder of all places. So <laughs> just when I was going to give up on online dating for eight years, I meet him. <laughs> Uh, Robert, I realized I needed some assistance. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we can't do this alone. We can only, I'm going to put that up because that's really good. Um, and I got to fix it with my victim thing anyways, but that's the thing. We can't do it alone. We think like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to do my shadow work by myself. I'm going to do, it. I'm going to read this self-help book and I'm going to get it. And that's why self-help books don't work because we only can see what we can only see. When we have guides, when we have mentors, when we have assistants, as you're saying, Robert, that's when we can excel. That's when we can actually like go deeper into this stuff, see it for what it's worth and change it. So we absolutely need assistance and you're not you, Robert, but whoever's listening, you're shooting yourself in the foot if you think all of these self-help books are really going to change your life. That's, I mean, I'm constantly investing in myself and 
I've been working with my therapist for nine years. Like they say like, oh no, that's enabling if you're working with someone for so long. No, it's not. It means it's like freaking working. It's enabling if I wasn't getting better. The fact that I'm getting better and I talk about her all the time. She has a workshop coming up too. So if you want to, if you want to go deep into this, I can give you that information. Um, but that's the thing. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't get assistance, if I didn't get guides, if I didn't find my mentors. So it went on a huge rant there. Thank you for that, <laughs> Robert. Um, I knew where to go and I was well taken care of. When you know how to ask, the universe knows how to deliver. Absolutely. Thank you, Robert. Mic drop. Uh, Leslie, studying epigenetics and energy turned the table for me. I learned what I was capable of and what resonance was. All the limiting beliefs still energy. Absolutely. They do. They completely still energy and they, they still are power. So yeah, it's, and that's the thing is you learn epigenetics and energy and that's what, what opened the door, you know, hopefully someone's listening to this on my podcast or on this Facebook live who is just now being attuned into this and this is going to open the door. And for those of you who already know this stuff, like you, Leslie and Robert, it's like, Maybe this will just give you another perspective and, and you can, you're obviously contributing just being here live with me. So, um, Robert, I used a method I learned of that I actually applied in 2000. That was how I realized how well it worked. That's awesome. That's so freaking cool. That, yeah, that you accidentally learned. I know, right? It's like, but but then I also, I come from the belief, it's like, oh, there are no accidents, though. Like, you were supposed to find it. Uh, Robert, I knew to protect what I was going to put in motion until after it was set up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, cool. So that is victim. Now, da -da 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 drum roll. We're coming to prostitute. We have one more, but this is the one I've been leading with is the prostitute with all of my, all of my, um, leading up to this live is all about, are you being a prostitute in your life? So this is the one that huge eye opening for me when I realized like, oh my gosh, I have a prostitute in me. It sounds really weird, but we all do. I have this prostitute archetype and how is it completely sabotaging my life? It's been huge for me. <laughs> Robert, my mother was convinced I was nuts because, because of the method that you accidentally applied into. Is that what you're saying of why she thought you were nuts? Leslie, your live popped up and I heard clearly to open it. It's a good one. Yay. Oh, good. Yeah. And then you, I know you know this stuff too, so you can contribute what you know as well. Yeah, exactly. See, there are no accidents. My live popped up and you said open it. Okay. So let's move on to the prostitute. So again, this is not what you think or is it? Because yes, it is actually like selling your body for money, but it's so much more and we all do it. So the question that the prostitute asks is, can your power be bought and sold in the marketplace of life? Another question, will you sell your spirit, your integrity, your honor because of a fear of physical survival? So the prostitute is all about selling yourself, selling your integrity, selling your ethics, selling your spirit, selling your honor for physical survival. And so the core of this has everything to do with your self-esteem and self-respect and faith. And faith because if you have a very, very strong faith, whatever it is that you believe in or don't, but if you have faith that everything is going to work out. No one can buy you. If you stand so strong by your morals and your values and your integrity, no one, excuse me, no one can buy you. You won't sell your power. You won't sell yourself. So the prostitute is, is really big where it's like you sell your dream for safety. So the shadow piece of it is where you can sell your body, you can sell your mind for money, for fame, for power. And you compromise your morals, your ethics, your integrity, for fame, for power, for security. 
And what it does is this prostitute archetype makes you confront your fears of survival. And this is the role that is the most terrifying and the more, most humiliating. Because who wants to really admit that they've sold their soul, they've sold their integrity, they've sold their morals for money, for fame, for power. No one wants to admit that. So this is the archetype that is absolutely terrifying and absolutely humiliating. And so every single time you gain more money, more power, more spirituality, something that makes you feel more powerful, just know that there's always going to be somewhere or something on the other side that wants to buy that piece of your soul, that wants to make you less powerful. So that's, that's something that's a shadow part of it as well, is it's like the more powerful you become, the more it comes on stronger, where it's wanting to buy you in that aspect, buy your beliefs, buy your morals, buy your integrity. So the thing to think about is we all have a cost. Every single person has a cost and something they're going to give up for what they want. So as soon as you can admit that and say, yeah, I do, I do have a cost and I will give up some things for something that I want, then you can go deep into it and you can see what's really going on with you. So it's kind of like that whole, like, if you think about the keeping up with the Joneses thing, like how much morality or how much integrity are you going to give up so you have that nice car, so you have that house, so you can keep up with the Joneses around you, so you can keep up this status to fit in. So, so what are you willing to sell for that power, that fame, that belonging? Belonging is a big one too. Just what I'm saying, keeping up with the Joneses is all about belonging. So what are you willing to sell to belong? And sometimes you lie and take advantage of people in order to survive and get ahead. And so that these are the shadow pieces of the prostitute. So you can see, okay, when have I lied? When have I taken advantage of people so I can get ahead? How, how did that make me feel afterwards? Was I fine or did I feel guilty? What did that do to me? What, why was I willing to do that? Why was I willing to give up my soul? What, why? Like, that's the question to ask. So the light side, again, there is a light side to this is, oh my gosh, you guys are writing so much. I can't read to read them. So the light side, and this is kind of what you can call like the sacred prostitute is you learn to no longer compromise your body, your mind, your spirit, or, 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 or you acknowledge that you are doing it and you don't judge yourself for doing it as long as you aren't harming someone by doing it. And so what I mean by that is Caroline Mace in the, in the thing I'm going to post for you guys, the link I'm going to post is she talks about how someone owned that. Yeah. I like a client of hers owned that I'm staying with my husband for his money. I don't love him anymore. And, but I'm doing it for security. I'm staying with him for the security of myself and for my kids. And that woman owned it. And that's okay. If you're not harming anyone, then, then that's, that's a way to, okay, at least you're owning it. It's when we feel shame about it. It's when we're, we're not owning it. We're not taking responsibility. That's when it's not that light side. That's when it's that shadow side. So that that's one way how you can make it light is not judge, do it and not judge yourself as long as you aren't harming anyone in the process, or you no longer are willing to compromise your body, your mind, your spirit. And, um, let me see. So it's, it's you begin to no longer be bought and you gain more and more self-esteem from it. So the story that I have for that is I have a coworker or an old coworker, obviously I haven't worked in a while at a job, old coworker contact me maybe like six months ago. And he was telling me about, it doesn't even matter, but I knew it was a scam. Like my my gut told me, Amy, this is a scam. He's trying to scam you. And, but then my, my mind was just, no, he's such a good guy though. He cares so much. When I worked with him, he really cared and he really gave and this can't be possible. And so I 
ended up like giving him all of this money because I'm supposed to be getting it back. That was the whole, that was the whole scam. And I gave up, I knew, I knew he was scamming me and I gave up my own, I don't even know, like my own morals and my own belief because I was so scared of what he was going to think if I told him it was a scam. I was so scared. So that's, um, that's also the, what is that victim? I think, see, I still have to try and figure this out, but it's also that like, oh, or that's more of like the, the rescuer, the people pleaser, where it's like, I cared more about what he thought of how I felt about him than I cared about losing all of this money in this thing where I'm supposed to make all this money. And it was a complete scam. And and so I prostituted myself out in that situation with real money because I was willing to give up my power to him because I didn't want him to know that I thought he was scamming me, which is, is just crazy, right? And a funny, so, and another thing is too, I have a colleague recently, so here we go, this is what I'm telling you guys, these archetypes are always in play. It doesn't matter how much work you do on yourself, these archetypes are in play and the thing is, when, when you do work on yourself, you notice them so much quicker. So I had a colleague call me out. I was like sharing about a client story and how it just did not go well. And I compromised myself to work with this client that I knew I shouldn't have worked with. And, and so she was saying like, Amy, you're being a prostitute in your business right now. You are prostituting yourself out. You're letting this client own you and your business by caring more about what they think than you owning it as a business owner. And I was like, oh my gosh, you are so right. That's exactly what I'm doing. That's, I completely was prostituting myself out because I cared so much about what this client thought than me being this business owner that stood my ground, that knew I gave my all and prostituted myself out by knowing that this is not the client for me and I still did anyways. So that's, that's my story. And then, um, my, my, um, client called me yesterday and she told me, she said, I can share this story. And she's like, Oh my gosh, please share my story. So she called me and she's like, Amy, long story short, I have 5,000 in the cloud, in the air somewhere that's supposed to be coming in for me. And I'm getting like, I can't pay my rent and I'm, I'm having checks bounced and all of these things are happening. And every time I talk with you, you help me out. What can I do? And I told her, I'm like, you're not being a leader in your business. You're prostituting yourself out. So here it is. Someone told me this about my business. And then here I am telling my client that this is what they're doing, right? It's just, it always works out. And I told her that and I was like, you're not stepping up as a business owner. These people are taking you for granted because you don't respect yourself because you're prostituting yourself out. And as soon as you step up and you say, no, I deserve to get this money and this is what needs to happen, the money's going to come. And, she's, and she said the funniest thing, you guys. She said, um, she's like, oh, okay, so, so I have to be my own pimp. And I was like dying laughing and no disgrace for anyone who's ever been like a prostitute or pimp before. And this is, this is nothing to do with it. It's all about the archetypes, but she just made me completely like die laughing because it's true. It's like she, so she needed to be a pimp in her business, I guess, if, if that's what you can call it. So it was just really funny. And then she called me today and said, I sent them my invoice. I told them what's going on. And they said the checks in the mail. And because she owned it, she owned her power instead of letting these people who she put on a pedestal for whatever reason, selling her soul, selling her business, not thinking she's good enough. She finally came back to them and said like, look, no, I'm not going to do this work for you until I get my, my money. And then they, they put it in, they put it in a check and it's on the way. And that was because she owned it. So those are huge, huge examples of how we can be prostituting in our life. And so the question to ask yourself is, when have I ever given up my beliefs to someone or something that I didn't believe in for some type of gain? That's how you know that's when you're in your prostitute, is when you are giving up your beliefs, your morals, your integrity for something you do not believe in in order for some type of gain. So that's how you can take your power back is understanding when you've done that. Okay, I know you guys have written so much. So let me 
let me go back. Um, Leslie says it's deemed normal by society and it robs us of our true essence. Absolutely. Absolutely. Akshaya, I don't clearly understand this. Can you tell me a real life example? Okay. Well, right. I know this is old, so let me know if, if I, I think I gave you some examples, but let me know. Um, okay. Robert, you wrote a lot. Let me see if I can read this. Where'd it go? Oh my gosh. It's almost taking over my face. Okay. I planted my words as my seeds in a 30 second time slot on a Christmas collaboration video. I simply asked in a way that edified the person putting it together that anyone that was looking for a partner would meet this person only needed to be able to recognize them for who they are. I even got a heads up a week and a half out like I did in the dating days when someone new was going to pop into my life. And that prediction was caught on a YouTube live stream. That's cool. So I think what you're sharing is like how, how things, how there are no accidents. I want to make sure, cause I know I kind of went on as you were posting that. So I want to make sure that's what, um, let me go to your next one. Here it is. I learned how to give away my most prized possession that changed my life. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, now I'm getting it. So you gave away your most prized possession and that changed your life. And it was only last week that I could finally say that I love myself. Robert, that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. And there's things that happen in our life in order for us to, like, things have to erupt, disrupt in our life in order for us to get to that place. And that's exactly it. You can finally say that you love yourself. That's, that's beautiful. That There's so many people in the world that can't. So that's huge, huge. Leslie, temptation is present on every level. So many paths to choose from. The more I prostitute and don't trust myself, I stay in my comfort zone and can't meet my edge at the pace I desire. Absolutely. This is how it hits me when I read this part of the book. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Temptation. Temptation is a big one for the prostitute. And then you don't trust yourself and you stay in your comfort zone. Exactly. Um, actually, does it also include staying with people who don't respect your boundaries for safety? Does it also include, does the prostitute include? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it has more than just the pro. So you're giving up. Yes. You're giving up your safety for people who don't respect you. Absolutely. Your like physical safety. You're giving that up. That's prostitution for sure it probably has a little bit of victim in there as well but yeah yes um actually i've been there done that and i felt so much shame around that past relationship there you go yeah so that shows you and i have done this and actually says i have done this in relationships so much to not be honest about what i can offer just so i continue to get what they offer there you go there you go. Like you're being honest right now about that. And so you're saying like, Oh gosh, yeah, I've been in my prostitute about what I can offer so that I can get what they offer. That's how you can take responsibility is just what you're doing right now is being honest about that. Um, Robert, I am stuck. I am stuck at the moment. Hopefully not for much longer. I had help pulling out of my head what it is I've been doing since January, 2018. I've been spotlighting the angels. I love that spotlighting the angels. Yeah. Well, hopefully let me see what you wrote next. Cause maybe you talked about being stuck. I walked into 2013. Absolutely certain. I would meet this person. Wow. Wow. Uh, adversity is my good friend now. Yeah. Yeah. So, let me, well, if, if you choose to, Robert, you can post what you're stuck at, but maybe, and I'm sure you have the assistant and the mentors in your life that are helping you with that. Um, yeah, adversity is your good friend now. Cool. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm loving your guys' comments. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being so vulnerable. This is not an easy topic. I was thinking like, no one's going to post, no one's going to share. Cause it's like, urgh, it's like on the edge. So you guys are awesome. Aw, aw, Robert. You are one of those angels. And I hit your, I hit your face again. How do I do this? You are one of those angels, Amy. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm so good to, so happy to see you back. All right. So, woo, now we're done with prostitute. Oh my gosh. It's already been an hour. 
am I doing? And this is, <laughs> that's okay. All right, so here's the last one. The last one is the saboteur. And so this is, I mean, all of them are big, but this is like a huge one because this is when we're not really fulfilling our dreams. We're not going after what we want because we sabotage ourselves. This is our inner critic. This is that inner critic of us that tells us you can do this later. Do you really want that? Everything, everyone else is doing it. You aren't special. Like all of that crap. That's the saboteur in your, in your life loud and strong. That inner critic that's constantly belittling you, bringing you down. That's that piece of it. So, aw, thank you, T. T says she agrees with Robert and Leslie. All unsealed and unskilled empaths are prostitute in this capacity. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for bringing that to the light. It's all unsealed and unskilled empaths. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like if you're an empath and you're a healer, you have to be working on yourself in order to, to really, truly help other people. Um, okay. So saboteur. So this is the way, like what I was saying, this is the way we block our dreams from happening because we know that our lives will not be the same. So this is a huge, huge fear of change. So anytime we tell the universe, God, source energy, whatever you believe in or not, anytime we put it out there that this is what we want in our life, this is our dream, then immediately we get back, oh, you can't do that. Well, why do you want that anyways? Oh, that's not good. You're not good. How, what are you think? How are you supposed to do it? Do you know that this so-and-so did this? And, and it's like, how are you even special? So that's that inner critic, right? So as soon as we put our dreams out there here, like the fear of change is so big in us. And that saboteur comes out loud and strong and gives you every single reason of why you don't want what you want. And then you're sitting there for years and years and years wishing you did what you wanted to do. And here's the one, one big thing about this. I just, um, I had a massage therapist earlier today and we got deep into this because we, and it was so cool because it's like, it was like, she didn't even charge me for the session because it ended up being like a coaching session. Like we talked about this and how she's sabotaging her life and what she wants. And it was so, so nice of her at the end. She's like, Amy, you helped me so much. I'm not going to charge you. Thank you. So that's like giving and receiving right there. And, but here, here's the thing is it's like so many clients, so many people, we just say so many times people say, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. Yes, you do. No BS, Amy. No BS, sweetheart, is right here saying, yes, you do. The only reason why you tell yourself you don't know what you want is you don't believe you can have it. Let me be clear. You always know what you want. You just don't believe you can have it because that saboteur is so big in your mind telling you that you can't have it, that it stops you from even getting to the place of thinking about your dreams and thinking about what you want. So here's the deal. You always know what you want. So let's just be clear about that. Now the piece that I'm talking about is how you talk yourself out of it. So um, so the, the core of this is, like I said, it's fear of change. And it's showing us our fears and our discomfort. Just like you said earlier, Leslie, it's like the comfort zone, right? So as soon as we are stepping into our dreams, stepping into what we truly want, out of our comfort zone, here comes that saboteur telling us why we can't have it, why we shouldn't have it, why we don't want it. And one thing that Caroline May said beautifully, I was listening to her earlier today, and she says that our saboteur speaks history fluently. So that means our saboteur is always coming from the past. Our saboteur is speaking our history fluently, and that's what stops us from going after what we want. Remember that one time? Remember when you did this? Remember your failure? That's what the saboteur is doing, and it's saboteur. Sa saboteur is doing is it speaks history fluently. That's how you know you're in your saboteur if your history is coming back and stopping you from what you want. So a piece of the shadow is it's self-destructive, and it's undermining, and the saboteur mirrors, mirrors our fear of taking responsibility for us and what we create. That's that whole getting out of your comfort zone. It mirrors our fear of it. And so we stay stuck. So I know Robert earlier, you said I'm stuck. So 
may maybe this will help you. I'll look at your comments as soon as I'm done with this sub um this content. So um here's the thing. Here's one really, really big thing to know is if you are going against your heart's desire, you're going to struggle. That's what I have to say. If you are doing something that is against your heart's desire, you are struggling. It means you're in your saboteur. So the light side, again, there can be a light side to the saboteur is again, it helps you see where and how you undermine yourself. And the way that you get out of your saboteur is you follow your intuition and you step into fear. You step into fear with courage. Every single person, every single person that you look up to, every single mentor out there, every single athlete, they always, not always, but they had to step into their fear with courage to go through it. You're, you're just going to remain in your little comfort zone if you don't step into your fear. Fear is good. Fear is showing you, whoa, I really want this. I really, really want this. That's why. So it's almost like the louder your saboteur is, is it's like the, the bigger it is of what you want your dreams are, which is a really good thing. So it just shows like, whoa, this is really big. This was, this is what makes my body happy because this sabotage saboteur is huge right now. And so, so in the light side of the saboteur is this is where you see what you need to fix and what you need to heal in your world. So let's see. Oh yeah. So my client's story is it's just like, it's just what I shared is just thinking they don't know what they want, not letting themselves actually get to what they want. So if you're not letting yourself, if you're telling yourself, I don't know what I want, bullshit, bullshit. Yes, you do. You're just scared. You're not going to get it or, and, or you're scared to go and get it. You're scared to get out of that comfort zone. And we've all been there. We've all been there. That's just, that's just how it is. And how many times have you pushed yourself out of your comfort zone and you look back and you're so thankful that you did and you're so proud of yourself. So it's like that saboteur is helping you get past that fear. It's showing up so big in your life that it's pushing you to go into that fear so you can jump out of that comfort zone. And so right now, oh, right now my saboteur is very, very loud. So I'm getting ready to really up level in my business. I know, Leslie, you talked about how you're up leveling. So maybe you'll re you relate with this. I'm getting ready to up level in my business. I want to prove that you can transform your life faster than you think. And in order for me to do that, I'm interviewing experts big, big time. I'm, I'm putting it out there. I'm hoping to interview big time names of experts that really do transform and kill people very quickly. And so I'm having to get over myself, get over my saboteur and reach out to these experts. And my saboteur is like, who the hell are you, Amy? Like, what do you think? Why do you think they would even want to talk to you? Who are you? Like, what? And the imposter syndrome is um, is very loud. And it's like, why why would they care about you? Why would they even, why why would they want to be interviewed by you? So it's just this, this saboteur is huge right now because I'm jumping so far out of my comfort zone. And it scares the hell out of me. And so that's why the saboteur is is huge so that's what's going on right with me right now so the the remedy like i said shared is follow your intuition and step into fear so i'm doing it anyways i'm i'm contacting these big names out there these experts in this field i'm contacting them i'm stepping out of my fear and i'm trusting that everything is going to go as planned so the question to ask yourself is one, one way you can really see the saboteur is like, how do you see it in other people? Like what I just shared with you is how do you see it in other people? Maybe even mentors, how do you see their saboteur show up? And how many times, here's a big one. Here's a really, really big one where you really get clear is how many times do you talk yourself out of what do you want? Saying that it can't happen. And it could even be a day. How many times a day do you talk yourself out of what you want saying that it can't happen? That's your saboteur loud and proud right there. Okay, let me get back to your comments. Robert, I found that 
a coach that is willing to take me by the hand to help me package my skills and present it, but I have no money to pay him. My wife lost her job after Christmas and has only regained employment. Oh no. Oh no, Robert. So, um, so let me go on with your next comment. So it is, I'm hiding your face. Let me get rid of this out of books. We're done now. Um, it is time for exercising absolute faith. Once again, absolutely, absolutely. I'm a big believer is when one door closes, another door opens. And a lot of times we, pe people can lose their job because they were supposed to quit earlier and they weren't happy with it and they were supposed to quit and things were showing up at work that was showing them this is not what's right for you yet they didn't they didn't quit so then they get fired um i don't know if she got fired or not i know you said she lost her job so i don't know her 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 story but i absolutely believe there are no accidents everything happens for a reason and there's so many stories out there of people who have lost their job or had these these traumatic moments happen to them and they're, they look back and they're so thankful because that's what pushed them out of their comfort zone to go live in their passion, to go do what they want. Um, Nicole says, what about, I don't have time. I don't. Oh, for the saboteur. Yeah. Yeah. That's a saboteur. So time is taking power over you. So your saboteur is telling you, I don't know what the context is, but your saboteur is telling you, you don't, you don't have enough time that that's saboteur completely. So it's, you have to talk to it and say, no, I do have time. Look, look at all the time I have in the world. And then again, show up in intuition, intuition and, and go like, I don't care that you think I don't have time. I'm going to do it. So yeah, that's the saboteur. Uh, Robert, the best part of my mission was that I experienced more joy in this time than I had the previous 50 years put together. Robert, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like these things happen to us and 50 years later, we, we feel that joy and we can look back and be thankful about what happened. We weren't thankful in the moment usually, but we can look back and be thankful about it. Um, <laughs> Nicole says, I was just going to say, I don't know what I want. Exactly. Yes, you do, Nicole. I'm calling you out. I'm calling bullshit. You know what you want. And I know you know what you want. We've talked about it. Um, Exia says, oh my God, I always tell myself that I don't have clarity on what I want. Yeah. See, that's the thing. We, we do that to keep ourselves in our saboteur. So if we don't get what we, we want, then we don't have an excuse for it. But it's, you, we always know. We always know. And here's the thing. The universe, God, source, whatever you believe in energy cannot bring it to you until you're clear about what you want. I was just on a call the other day where this woman had conflicting beliefs and she's like, oh, but I so badly just want to be seen and heard. But oh my gosh, every time I'm seen and heard, I don't want to be it. And I was like, well, what do you want? You're telling your mind one thing. Oh my gosh, this is what I want. I want to be seen and heard so I can be more abundant, so I can make more of an imp impact on the world. And here's her child, right? But I'm so scared. I'm so scared to be seen and heard. It's like, well, no wonder why you're so confused because you're putting two things out there, conflicting beliefs. You have to know what you want and get past the fear and go through it. Uh, Robert says, I was told I needed some clarity and one of my friends helped me find some. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. See, that's what guides, friends, assistance, all of that does. And... There is an open door waiting for me to step through at this very moment. So I guess I know what I'm going to do after this. Yay! I'm so excited. See, there's always doors over there. We're just, if we're in tunnel vision, we don't see them. But as soon as we're open to possibilities, they're everywhere. Leslie, that's what the edge feels like. Scary and exciting AF. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Scary and exciting. That's how you know it's big is if you're scared and excited at the same time. Case studies. Um, let me know if you need more. I think I gave you guys a lot, but let me know. Um, of course they care. They were, they were you. Of course they care. They were you. It's so hard doing this and then going back to your comments and like, what is that? What, what are you referring to? Of course they care. They were you. Um, sabotage. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to get it. 
you will be 100. Oh, 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 yeah, about my saboteur. See, <laughs> I don't even want to go there. My saboteur is like not even letting me go there. Yes, of course they care. They were you. Yes, they were me at one point. Exactly. They they had to do the interview and they had to put themselves out there. Exactly. I will be 100% embraced. Thank you, Leslie. Yes, mirror, mirror. That's how you're sabotaging on some level as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The mirror, the mirrors are everywhere. As soon as we see them, that's when we can change them. Uh, oh, Robert, I became friends with the very people that were inspiring me, that were saying things that resonated with me and bringing the love to them. Acknowledgement and belief has been such a part of my mission. That's beautiful. Robert, you're such a beautiful soul. Um, Leslie, those are the challenges that we grow the most powerfully from, from when we can make a choice to believe in ourselves anyway. Yep. Absolutely. Oh my God. Me right now. Time management BS busting. Yes. BS. Yeah. Don't, don't let the time saboteur take over. Uh, <laughs> Nicole says, LOL. Aw, Robert, I have become a joy generation machine. I can totally see that. Ekshaya, hopefully, hopefully these examples helped you with your earlier questions. You said, I can totally relate to conflicting beliefs, especially around making an impact and fear of being seen. Mm hmm. Yeah, I did the same thing. Are you kidding me? My big mission is that everyone needs to be seen and heard. And I have my saboteur it says, you don't deserve to be seen and heard, which right, the deserve piece comes out. So that's the child. That's the child of abandonment. I know. It's crazy. It's everywhere, you guys. These archetypes are everywhere. And as soon as we realize them, that's when we get our power back. Um, what you're doing, case studies with your outreach. Um, case studies with my outreach. Oh, so, so yeah. So what I'm doing is I want to interview people that have created different modalities and things that have helped people transform their life very quickly. So I want to get someone that does EFT, tapping, I already have a yoga person. Um, I already have Marissa Peer who created RTT. And I'm wanting to get other people that are doing different modalities that they actually have clients that have healed or transformed their life quickly. So that's that's the that's, that's where I'm going. And Robert says, I sort of did that, putting all my energy into reaching out, coming out of nowhere and grabbing the spotlight during live streams with my comments to shine that light back on the host and guests. Oh, that's beautiful. That's so like receiving and giving, right? It's beautiful. Oh, my boyfriend's leaving. Bye, Journey. <laughs> He's going to wave to me. Bye. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to go on so long. I was going to say goodbye to him before he left. Okay. So the last piece, so was this, was this, um, insightful for you? What did, did you learn something? Did you learn something about yourself? Was it, was it not so fun going into the shadow, but are you happy? Cause now you can change it. Cause once you're aware, that's when you can change it. So, so let me know. Um, so here's the thing. If you are ready to completely own your power and go after your dreams, this is what I'm going to encourage you to do. Take just one of these archetypes. I mean, obviously, if you take all four, that's amazing. But at least oh, you owe it to yourself to take one of these archetypes that I spoke about, the child, the victim, the saboteur, or the prostitute, and find a time in your life with this archetype that was challenging for you. Find a time in your life where fear showed up, where there was a challenge in your life. And I want you to see the shadow side and the light side of that archetype. And I want you to see what does this archetype have to teach you? What, what is it teaching you? Why is it in your life? What's showing up? And here's the, here's the big one is what is the payoff for letting this archetype run you? What is the payoff for letting this archetype take your power? And there's always a payoff. We think like, oh gosh, well, I don't want to do that. That's not what I want to do in my life. I know it's not what you want to do but you're getting something from it. Otherwise you would change it. So the more that you can see what the payoff is of why this archetype is taking your power, that's when you can change it. Okay. So Nicole says, yes, that I need to take the time to figure myself out. Interesting that you wrote time again, right? So you have all the time in the world, saboteur, Nicole's saboteur. You have all the time in the world to figure yourself out, <laughs> but yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I just gave you guys a load of information to help you on that journey. 
Leslie, this has been wonderful and I needed it today to bust through where I was letting myself get overwhelmed from all the challenges I'm making. Yes, and you are up leveling big time right now. So that just means it's like everything that's in the way kind of gets in the way to show you right before you up level, just like what's happening with me and contacting all of these experts, all of these sabotage thoughts and these victim energy and this prostitute and all of this stuff is like showing up hardcore right now so I can bust through them so I can up level exactly what you're doing right now, Leslie. <laughs> T says, this was a uh, freaking amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Aha, Amy. So T, one of my clients, she coined me Amy Aha Turner, and she calls me Amazing Amy, Amy Amazing Aha Amy, all kinds of names, but all kinds of like Amazing and Aha, so I love that T. I'm glad you got something from this. Leslie, I know, right? Oh, yes, the payoff. Yes, the payoff is not fun, but it's so informative. As soon as we realize why we're doing the things we don't want to do and we see what we're getting from it, that's when we can change it so much quicker. Robert, I was operating fully within my purpose. This did help me to go ahead with something I've been offered. There are two events I've been invited to in California in April that I'd love to attend. Well, there you go. There you go. This is helping you own your purpose, own your power, come to California. Where in California? Because I, I live in California, so if you're close, we'll have to <laughs> to me. Okay, Leslie. Bye. Bye, Robert. Bye, T. Bye, Nicole. Bye, everyone who watches on the replay. Let me know what you learned from this. Let me know. Yeah, just, just let me know how that was. So have a great rest of your night, and I will see you next time. Bye.